This episode of the Definitive Science Institute is brought to you by Major K's Moist Liquid Sunblock Cream Tanning Lotion. It's moist. The scientist, God's gift to mankind. The average scientist spends 45% of his time developing theories on multidimensional time travel. He spends another 45% of his time attempting to hide those ideas from his future self. 18% of his time is spent pondering the mysteries of the universe. 4% is spent galloping in fields of tulips. And the other 65% of his time is spent running ordinary tap water. Now I know what you may be thinking. What I really want to know is, what is a scientist's greatest enemy? Well, excuse my pompous adherence to accurate scientific terms, but the phrase you were searching for happens to be his natural predator. The answer to this question may seem too obvious to be true. However, the scientist's most deadly natural predator is quite unequivocally the sun. For centuries, the scientist, despite his reliance on abrasive amounts of scientific paraphernalia, has tried and failed at determining a defense against this seemingly all-powerful adversary. Until today. The Definitive Science Institute has gathered a team of distinguished scientists with one goal in mind, to eradicate or destroy the sun once and for all. Their first idea was to light the sun on fire, but it was suddenly brought to their attention the appalling lack of Bunsen burners. Next, one young hopeful spent mind-numbing years developing a raw serum that would literally dissolve solar energy. However, his hopes and dreams quickly vanished in the roars of laughter and ghastly criticisms from his fellow colleagues. They proceeded to come up with a vast sum of creative, yet not entirely brilliant ideas. These involved certain matters of strategic diplomacy, such as sending it a nicely adorned going away card, tricking it into feeling as if it was missing a rather happening party on the other end of the galaxy, feeding it one too many poisoned mushrooms, and simply asking it politely to wander off. After much deliberation, these few geniuses of their time arrived at a singular answer to the problem. It came during a nightly reading of their favorite literary choice. Because of this newfound revelation that the sun does indeed contain gas, an official plan was hatched. It is a well-known fact that the most effective form of aggression against a gaseous container is a weapon most widely used by primitive cultures of the ancient world, the bow and arrow. Unfortunately, their ordinary forms of measurement proved to be less than operational, and being forced to a more rudimentary scale, they soon determined the height of the sun to be no greater than twice that of a really tall tree. After years of grueling preparation, the big day had finally arrived. One of the scientists, in a freak misunderstanding, had one time purchased a membership to a local gym and lifted weights years prior, and so he was consequently chosen to perform the task of shooting the arrow which would obliterate the sun. It was a monumental day to say the least, one that would be remembered for eons to come. Then the scientists settled in for the long waiting process, as the arrow drifted its way through the atmosphere and across the reaches of space. As it came time for the sun to burst, it was recorded that one of the scientists made the timeless statement that would mark the achievements of scientists around the world for the next millennium. The statement went as follows, Brace yourselves, this is going to be pretty cool.